for coming out on this wet day today. I know traffic mustn't have been easy, but we are very glad you came because we are very lucky here today to not only have Mrs. Bill William from Year 3 with us, and I'm Lauren Dowse, I'm the Head of English at JB Campus, and I work in Year 4, but we've got our special guest this week over from the UK. We've got Richard Grant, otherwise known as the Dreadlock Alien. So we're hoping that today, um, through our aims of the session, is to make sure that we cover a number of high points for you. And all these things that we're showing you here today really do link in with our mission and our vision of the school. So what we are here to do is to provide an outstanding British education for a successful international future. And as part of that, our vision and our belief statement is that to lead the pursuit of excellence in learning through nurturing, inspiring and enriching the lives and characters of young people, we believe that through generosity of time and our care and attention to every individual, we find a way to bring out the best in all people and create an enduring sense of belonging to something very special. And it's for that reason that we actually are very lucky to have the Dreadnought Alien back again. And I'm sure he will tell you why he has chosen to return to us. <laughs> so, by the end of today, we are hoping that you will go away with these pints. We hope that you will know what poetry is and you'll know that it comes in many different forms. We hope that you will understand why poetry is so important for your children and their development. We hope that you know that poetry fits in with our class curriculum and the opportunities that we provide for your children at our school. We want you to go away feeling inspired. You never know, you might be sporting a very different hat later today to go home to your children, take on a bit of role play and see what you can do. You might also have a range of activities. There might be a particular activity that you think will benefit your child and you might be able to try that at home. We also want to tell you about what we do here at Alice Smith and what you can do to help promote your children as public speakers. So what is poetry? Well, it's a vessel of communication. And it can be spoken, it can be written, and often it comes in verse. We know that it can combine sounds, um, word play, meanings, messages, it's something that all children can access. And we try to promote those different forms of access at Alice Smith. So your children will not just be taught about haikus, they will not just be taught about shape poems, they will not just be taught about rhyming couplets, there is so much more. Onomatopoeia, alliteration, all these elements will be introduced to your child when they are ready to take it. So poetry in year one can sometimes look very different to poetry in year six. However, some poems look very similar because it's what that child is feeling or their emotion. Right, so I'm just going to talk about um, why poetry is so important and why it matters to everybody actually, children and staff and adults and everybody. Um, so uh, this quote is from um, a person called Anthony Wilson and he's uh, one of the key members of the Poetry Society which is a, a UK organisation which has been going for over a hundred years and its aim is to promote poetry in all its forms. And he says that schools need poetry because poetry is uniquely placed to allow ch children how to say what they really want to say in the way they want to say it. Okay, and I think that's actually quite a powerful message and I'm quite glad I, I said that correctly. It's kind of practice, wasn't it? Okay, so um, other reasons why poetry is so important and why it really does matter to our children. It builds resilience and it fosters that sense of learning emotionally and socially. So it gives children key messages for um, how to live our lives, how to interact with other people, and how to find extra meaning in our lives. So a well-crafted phrase in a poem can help us see and experience in an entirely new way. And from that, we can gain an insight which gives us understanding and a strength. I can remember, and I'm sure many of us here can, if we did poetry in our schools when we were very small at primary school, I can still remember some of those lines I learned. And sometimes when I'm feeling a bit bored or maybe, if, maybe feeling a bit down, I can remember those poems. And it's very comforting, the rhyme and the rhythm and the sound of those words. Um, 
we've got quite from Nikki Giovanni here. She's a, um, an American, a black American uh, poet, and she's a, a TV personality. She's quite famous in the States. And she says, poetry is like air. It is one of the necessary things. Everyone benefits from poetry, and as you know, poetry is international. Children are naturally drawn to poetry from a young age. Some of the books we've got out on the tables, I'm sure you're familiar with many of them, but they contain a lot of rhyme and rhythm, and children love to say that. You only have to come out onto the playground and see and hear children chanting and speaking rhymes and just getting a lot of fun and enjoyment from doing that. That rhyme and rhythm helps develop their phonological awareness, which is so, so important for their reading skills and their writing skills and their speaking skills. And we're going to find out later this morning just how physical poetry can be. It really is very, very kinesthetic. And the rhythm and the rhyme can be powerful and full-bodied. That's a photograph of the Dredd O'Kelly in my class yesterday. And all the children were up on their feet, moving, joining in, really physical and getting a lot of enjoyment from doing that. Okay, so we know that reading with children is really important, but poetry is, is especially important because actually it doesn't matter if they don't understand all the words that are contained in the poem. It's hearing the sounds of the words and looking at the speech patterns and they get curious about what those words can mean. They're saying them, they get curious about what they mean and that in itself builds their vocabulary. They want to say the words, then they want to create their own. So many of you will be familiar with our class curriculum and how it looks and you'll see at the centre we have the children. We have the children where we want to promote those learner attributes, like the happy and healthy, respectful, community-minded, independent learners, communicators, problem solvers. Through this week alone, we have seen a number of children demonstrating those attributes. I am sure that many children in Key Stage 2 have come home and talked about this visitor who's got the strange hair coming into the classroom. They've come home rhyming, you might have had a bit of beatboxing going on, so if you've got Key Stage 2 children, they might have talked to you about how they take it in turns with somebody in their group and how they're developing this form of communication. Children in year four have just put on a production and as teachers we can now see if they are transferring those skills to other aspects of their learning. So it's a great assessment opportunity for us as well. And it's a good time for children to have a go because you can't get poetry wrong. You can't get poetry wrong. And that for our children, for some of them, is the best thing about poetry. Everything is right, everything is acceptable, and everything can have a go. So when we've looked at some rhyming words, I know for in my class, we were thinking about rhyming words and we came up with a gobbledygook word. It's not a real word in the dictionary, but in our poem, it fits, and that's okay. And that's why we make sure that we have these visitors, this learning, this inspiration for your children here at Alice Smith. Okay, so, um, just got a couple of quotes here from uh, staff and children as well. So, uh, we asked some of our uh, staff members why they like poetry, because actually, fundamentally, poetry is about enjoying. It's all about enjoying our learning. If the children are enjoying it, then their lives and their learning will be enriched. So, Mrs. Nadaraja, I love teaching poetry. It's more accessible than writing a description, because it has less rules. You can be successful, and most importantly, it is fun. Uh, and then Mrs. Wellington says, Poetry is wonderful for helping children to hear language patterns and rhymes, which are essential for learning to read and write. It is great for young children who can actually comprehend situations in poetry that may be too complex for them to understand in poetry. Now, I've just got a little video here of some year four children uh, talking about why they enjoy poetry. So, the bottom.
sorry about the volume there, that wasn't really good, but I hope you caught some of that. So I'm just trying to get clicking on that. Okay, so now we're going to pass you over to the fun bit. Here we go. Alright, time to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, so welcome, welcome, namaste, hola, bonjour, konnichiwa, ni hao, and good morning. Uh, this is a little bit strange for me, I've never done this before. If uh, 54 parents gathered in the UK at quarter past eight, it would be to, to sack the headmaster or something like that, a protest. <laughs> Raise our grades. So this is amazing. Give yourselves a round of applause for being excellent parents. Wow. Um, I'm not a teacher. Uh, that is a qualification and job description and expectations and contracts. I'm just a poet. However, I have visited uh, probably over a thousand schools around the UK and around the world. And the reason I come back to Alice Smith is because I brag about Alice Smith wherever I go. The teachers are amazing. Um, different standards in teaching are reflected in different standards of young people. So you should feel very blessed. Uh, and I can also qualify that because I've been coming here a few years now, so I've seen the competition. I've seen a few of the schools, Epsom College, so on and so forth around. Uh, so can you give the teachers a round of applause? Honestly, yeah. Okay, so skill swap. Uh, first of all, can you turn your papers over onto the blank side? How many of you drove here this morning? Yeah, yeah, so that 20 minutes with your young person, you're preparing them for school. Have you got your sandwiches? Have you got your sports kit? What you can do as well is get their brains to start firing. Because when they come to school, it's a very competitive environment. They've got to start learning straight away. Uh, so what you do is you wake up both sides of their brains. Now, I used to get young people to shake their heads violently, but don't do that. <laughs> no speed and everything. Uh, but what I do is uh, like Nintendo brain training. This is the opposite poem. Unless you're driving along, you can feel free to do this to the young person. All you do is you say a word and they say the opposite. But you do it in rhythm. Let me see actually how awake you lot are, alright? <laughs> if I said left, then you'd say right. left, right. left, right. It, 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 the gender thing. Every day the girls are like, right, right, right. And the boys are like, does he want us to do something? <laughs> and that hasn't changed. <laughs> okay, let's try again. If I said left, then you'd say, left, left. If I said day, then you'd say, day, day. If I said good, then you'd say, good, good. If I said happy, then you'd say, happy, happy. Look at you, think you're all clever now, don't you? <laughs> Challenging. Okay, let me speed it up to National Year 4 standard. Ready? See what you're saying then. If I said East, you'd say East, East. If I said Worst, you'd say Worst, Worst. If I said Hot, then you'd say Hot, Hot. If I said Hairy, you'd say Well done. It's either way, brilliant. Someone over here said Not Hairy. If I said Hip, then you'd say Hip, hip. If I said start, then you'd say, who said finish? <laughs> yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause. I'm going to give you five seconds to think of your favourite teacher when you were at school. Five seconds thinking of gospel time. Go. Put your hand up when you thought of your favourite teacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me give you a little life lesson. Your favourite teacher will never ever, ever leave you. And I don't mean that in a stalker type way. <laughs> she imagine you're 25 washing up. Oh, it's still there. <laughs> what I mean is this. Uh, can you put your hands up again? It only took you a couple of seconds. Favourite teacher, shout out, Miss. Miss Sir. Miss Miss Huffy. Yeah, Miss. Miss Sir. Jonathan Smart. Cole Brits, do you remember those favourite teachers? And who can remember their favourite lesson? Yeah, loads of you. What was your favourite lesson, Miss? Modern history. Modern history. Cool. Biology? Biology. Well, so immediately, yes sir? DT. DT. What's DT? No, no. Oh yeah, yeah, all these modern subjects. I don't know. <laughs> DT. I've got another company, DT. Um, yeah, so uh, the thing that connects those, your favourite teacher and your favourite lesson, are kind of memory muscles, emotional memory muscles that relate back to good times. It's, com it's commonly been proved that when you relax yourselves and you can enjoy learning, uh, then those memories stay there a lot longer. Um, so, this is a poem about the first time a teacher said well done to me. 
After three, actually, I want you all to shout, well done, just so you get used to it. One, two, three, go. Well done. Yeah. This was about a poem about the first time a teacher ever said well done to me. I was six years old. Now you might think that's quite late to get praised for the first time in your life, six years old. Let me just admit to you something I'm not proud of. Well, to balance it out, I'm proud of a load of things. I met the Queen two years ago, check this out. Buckingham Palace. Oh, that's interesting, that's interesting. You show that to year two threes, they're like, wow! Applause. Year sevens and eights, they're like, yeah, you're right. Year elevens, they're like, Photoshop. But they were with parents, they believe it. That's proper, anyway. Buckingham Palace. Proud of that. One thing I'm not proud of, though, when I was six years old, I was a little bit of a bad lad. In fact, I was a nightmare. I got put into care, but sometimes my real parents didn't care. So I had a total of 27 different sets of foster carers. Moved around all the time. <laughs> back, back, so on and so forth. And, and so I was a little bit of a nightmare. At six years old, I was quite an angry child. In fact, I'd given up on adults. I was like, you're all losers, man. Let me down, I don't need any of you. I'm six years old. And I decided in my fragile mind to get through life, I could be a superhero. <laughs> in fact, my year two teacher actually wrote, you're not allowed to write stuff like this anymore, but she put a strange child. <laughs> he kept to school with his pants on the outside of his trousers for two weeks. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so the first time my teacher said, well, and I didn't believe her. First one was like, me? That well done stick of it? It's not for me, it's for Jamal, isn't it? <laughs> Jamal always gets well done. I hate you, Jamal. It's not for Jamal, it's for me. I got so overwhelmed in front of the whole class. Bad man, ninja man. Weigh yourself. The poem goes like this. <laughs> poetry, poetry. I was six years old. No one had ever told me I was good at something, but one time, let me tell you about, I got my heart jumping. Let me tell you all. Right back to the start. I love Mrs. Evans because she taught me for art. Most lessons I sat around because I thought they were boring. Me and Miss Kirsten did an impression of someone snoring. We got kicked outside the class. Paper and pencil, we did some withdrawing. Not well looked after, full of laughter. I was always trying to be after than this teacher on the next table. Sometimes, life was like my desk. A little bit unstable. So there I am, sat outside the lesson again. Only got one pencil, because I'm not allowed a pen, but I can. I can draw more than a score. Sketch someone sketchy, I can paint the front door, I can scribble and dribble. I can create a cartoon. I can even draw a curtains to rub out the moon. The paper, the pencil, and me. Sometimes my efforts were blunt, up front, sharp, spoken, concept broken, but I kept a clear mind. See, me and this lady get, yeah, we've got 25 pencils in one day. Not because we wrote a lot, but because we sharpened them all the way. <laughs> Mrs. Evans is at the front telling everybody, learn, learn, learn. We snuck behind with a desk sharp, and they're going, turn, turn, turn. So we love art lessons, because learning could be fun. Especially when I got my work back and it said, well done. Oh no, jelly belly. You've got this weird feeling inside. Mrs. Evans said, you better watch out, boy, you're going to burst with pride. I said, oh no, Mrs. Evans, I don't like this feeling. And I wet myself and cry. So when people say well done, I tend to shy away. But you can always rest assured or remember what you say. So whether you're a teacher, librarian, grandparent, or a mum, just remember the importance of telling our young ones, well done. And in the future, when it may seem like they're swimming against the tide, they'll look back to those few seconds and how you made them feel so good inside. That's the end of that point. We can applaud loudly if you wish. Who's heard your young person's uh, doing some beatboxing? It's really annoyed you on the way out. Shut up, shut up! <laughs> um, this is about rhythm and rhyme. Who's going to get some urban points? Who's going to get some cool points as a parent and learn some beatboxing? Hands up. Come on, who's the Evans? Come on up, give her a round of applause. Come on, you, you put your hand up. Come on up. Who else? Who else? One from each row. You, miss, you can come up. Brilliant, Brixton. Who's on this row? Your group, who come on, be brave, someone put your hand up, group, come on, look, this is a shy group, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Well, this side here, this side, any side, stir in the red, you look cool, man, come on up, come on, give him a round of applause. <laughs> so this is about basic rhythm and rhyme. In fact, let me ask this, who can spell the word rhythm? Put your hands up. <laughs> Check it out. 
one of the most, you know, googling. That's <laughs> silly. Rhythm is one of the most misspelled words in the English language. There's a little, who can spell the word because? Yeah, because you know that little rhyme, innit? What is it? Go on, say it. I can't believe we're getting around, give a round of applause. Big elephants can always use small lexes. Rhythm is, rhythm has your two hips moving. Yeah, look at write it down, make it notes. You went to university, didn't you? <laughs> rhythm has your two hips moving. Or, my favourite, Robin Hood yells to his mom. Mom! R-H-Y-T-H-A, each way you'll never strong with them. So we need a little bit of rhythm. Now beatbox is about closing and sibilant sounds to create sound steps. Can you all put your hands in front of your mouths and just give me a heartbeat like this? Feel that air, that's a closing sound. When you teach deaf children how to speak and to enunciate the letter P or B, you get them to blow a candle out like So just give me a heartbeat, give them a little bit of confidence, give them a heartbeat. Okay, we're going to have four beats from each of you. Go on, go on, give a round of applause. A few heart problems there. Give a round of applause. Hey, go on, hey, go on. So that's level one, that's level one. Don't get too excited, that's level one. But as you're so good, I'm going to go to level four. They just love the merry values. <laughs> Level four. Uh, three words, boots and cats. Okay? If you're gonna all do it at once, give me a little bit of confidence. Ready? Three, two, one. Boots and cats, 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 boots and cats. That's very posh. <laughs> boots and cats. <laughs> <laughs> Level nine. Uh, four words that every single one of your young persons were born to be. Born to be clever. Born to be clever. Born to be clever. To be born to be clever. To be born. But the born sound is a new sound. Check it out. Born. 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 Born to be clever. To be born to be clever. Let me just hear the born. Born. Look, you do the born. 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 <laughs> now put it all together. To be born, to be clever. To be born, to be clever. Born, to be clever. Yeah, good one. To be born, to be clever. To be born, to be clever. Born, to be clever. Yeah, yeah, no. To be born, to be clever. To be born, to be clever. Give me a round of applause. Okay, let's have a seat. Let's have a seat. Let's have a seat. So when we write slam poems, we're allowed to put five percent beatbox. And also 5% melody, a little bit of song, a little bit of soundscape. Uh, there's a group this afternoon, they wrote about homelessness. And uh, they adapted one of Adele's songs. So one of the girls gets out of a box and she says, Should I give up? Should we just keep sleeping on pavements? Even though I live nowhere. And there's another one that they talk. See, they taught me this week. I didn't know. Hands up if you know that Pluto isn't a planet. So we've all looked, oh, it's a couple of you, yeah, all right. You're in with the science crowd. Apparently, Pluto isn't big enough to be a planet. And I didn't know that, I learned that. I googled it, they're right, they're right. It's just been redefined. So one of their songs is, Where has Pluto gone? Where has Pluto gone? Where? It's really, it's good, it's good. So uh, a little bit of chorus shows the work together. Um, so what we're going to do now is, uh, if you turn your papers over again, you'll see there's a very simple couplet ladder. Now the ladder has to be on the right hand side of your page. Right hand side of your page. So first task, you just write your name on the top. That shows the columns on the right hand side of the page. Right hand side of the page. Brilliant. Excellent. Cool. And then I'm going to show you really quickly how we build and write poems. Now this couple of ladder, I usually let you fill it in. But Miss says we're teaching others. So, oh no, okay, let's do it for it. <laughs> so uh, we, we figure that you all have something in common. So what we need to do is to attempt to write a generic poem from a parent to a child. It doesn't matter what age, it could be an unborn child, it could be a 35-year-old child. You're still a parent. So the couplets I'm going to give you. So on the right-hand side of your page, in the top box, can you write the word achieve? A-C-H-I-E-V-E. -E. And then misalign, and then the next box, believe. 
believe. There are some pens and pencils of plan B. The pen is at work. Then under that, can you put a space and then the word hope and cope. So I'll walk around and show you that. In fact, Miss, if you walk around that, I'm going to do one of the board. Hope and cope. What are the next two? Education. Education. And then nation. Nation. And then the next one actually, hands up. Give me a word that you would write in a poem that your child's going to read. You can see the flow we're going at, hope, cope. Any word, any word. Love. Love, love. brilliant, love, stick love in. What would you rhyme with love? Shove, no, 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 shove. Dove, dove. Dove, dove. or above? Dove. Above, dove, it's up to you. Shove, dove. So we're building couplets down the side like this. What are the next two, miss? Uh, clever and forever. Yeah, clever and forever. So you can see the language that we're using towards the end of the poem, forever. And the last two couplets are? Laughter and phrase ever after. Yeah, Mrs. Posh says so she says laughter. <laughs> Sorry. I say laughter. <laughs> laughter and ever after. It's great having an accent, you can make things wrong. And then pens down. What I don't want you to do is what some students do and get their pen and write really big to fill the line in. You can achieve. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will believe. No. No, no, no. Some of your young people do that. They write really big. I'll finish. No. You need to pack that line with imagery. This is a half felt poem. You may well type this up and put it on your child's bedroom wall as a, a kind of a, a mantra or a motto. So, Miss, I know you're, you're, you're clever. What's your name, Miss? And what's your child's name? Alessandra. Ooh. So, Alessandra and achieve. Put the alliteration, no points, well done. So, Alessandra, every day I want you to achieve. I'm your mother. What's your name? You have to think about that. I'm your mother, Anne, and you, I truly believe. Every day I sprinkle you with a little bit of hope. Sometimes in the future I know you'll need that strength to cope. Okay, so you can see how this poem's going. You know your child, personalise your poem. Uh, any questions? about this uh, okay you've now got like every one of your child's have this week six minutes quiet writing time that's no gossiping no phones uh, just think about two lines that you might say to your child on the way home that rhyme you know this could be a real empowerment poem all through their educational career they'll need that support they might look at that poem and know that you really believe in that child so have a think about even if you only do two lines although that's not good enough for me <laughs> At least six lines each. This is Paranormal for Alice Smith up the grades. Yeah? You can't have super fantastic children and not be super fantastic parents. You're here. So six lines each. You're six minutes and the teacher is around to help you. They are minds of information, dissertations, walking encyclopedia, Wikipedias. Six minutes. In fact, what we'll do to make it easier, we'll make it a team poem. So whoever's on your table, so you write the first two lines, you do the second two. You can figure it out. That makes it easier. Come on, two lines each. Two lines each. All right. Your six minutes. Start now. Brilliant. This team are sorted already. They delegate first two lines each, first, second, third, fourth. Excellent. Well done. This is one. Are you doing this
Amir for her. So you play with the I am here for her. I, mean. uh, I know in life you will need strength and support to cope. Brilliant. Four minutes remaining. Four minutes remaining. Brilliant. So, what do you so, I engineer your future so that you will achieve. I build the blocks so that you will believe. So, related to what you do. What do you do, sir? Trading. Cool, cool, cool. So, I sell stocks each day. I will buy some machines. Uh, how much profit will I make on a percentage of belief? Or, uh, uh, you know, something like that. Equate it to what you do. Uh, percentages. What do you do for a living? For work? My, my work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Civil engineer. Civil engineer. Building. Building. Cool, cool. So you say, uh, what's your name, sir? Cool. At Simoto, every day I build so that you will achieve. I build so that you will achieve. Blocks of foundation so that you will believe. Yeah, so you read about what you do as a living to give them give the language. What do you do, miss? Oh, I don't even know about that. <laughs> Every day I look through a I'll leave you that. That's hard. Well done, Ricky. Come here. Okay, what's your name, sir? What do you do for you?
three, two, one. Time's up, time's up. Can you all stand up for me? Stand up for me. Hold your poems in front of you. And don't worry about anybody listening, no one can hear, you're all going to read at once. But what we're going to do is we're going to do it in different ways. So every time you get to like the fourth line, I'll change the style. So the first style, can you all read to me at once, but I want it to be the worst reading ever. All the bad habits of public speaking, shuffling, shaking, hello mom, uh, and those sort of things. So, uh, the worst reading ever, start with point, ready? All at once, three, two, one, go! <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Terrible. Really bad. <laughs> oh no. And stop. Go back to the start we point. Whisper your first four lines at me. Go. Excellent. Brilliant. Excellent. And stop. Go back to the start we point. This time, I want you to imagine that I'm deaf and I can't hear you or I can't understand the language. Did you know that people listen with their eyes? They do. Don't you believe me? Watch. Can you all put your fingers on your nose? Brilliant. Can you all now put your arms up vertically in the air for me? Only one, one person listen. Ah, put your arms up vertically in the air for me. If you look with your eyes, then your eyes don't be eyes. You say vertically. Okay. So this time when you read your poem, use your gestures. Use your eye contact. Look into my eyes at the end of every line. Ready? Steady, go. Read to me. Excellent. Go back to the start. This time, read your poem out in a foreign accent. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! <laughs> and stop. Okay, what you need to do now is you're going to um, kind of figure out who in your group, there's four groups here, uh, is proud of their lines. So hands up, who's proud of their lines? Come on. Uh oh. <laughs> Mark that down, parents' confidence. <laughs> Your children will be like, me, me, get away, me, me. <laughs> All right, grab a seat, I'm going to pick some people. If I miss, can you go along that road? Any spot, you know, good lines. Pick your team, miss, along this road. Three or four points. Uh, miss, can you do this road? And I'm going to do this road. Yeah. So, you throw clothes. You and my team. We can run, run. Look how much you grow. You can be in my team, and you too. Yeah. I've got a team of four. Come on up, come on up. Come on, miss, come on up. Come on, miss, come on up. I've got my team ready. Yeah. You can be in a dreadlock. Poetry masters and mistresses. That's okay. I've got a dreadlock. So. One minute to get your teams ready, teachers. One minute. Come on, come on, come on, Send your writers up, send your writers up. That's okay, let's have a look. Brilliant, yeah, come on up, come on up. Can you give these parents a big round of applause? Okay. Let's come this way a little bit. Sir, you can come this way a little bit. Stretch out, stretch out, stretch out. And start this in. Come on up, miss. Find your best two lines. Best two lines. I'm going to start this in. Ready? Well, you mine already. So. Do these ones. All right. All right. There's so much in life to achieve. All you need to is believe. Give him a round of applause. All right. With ammunition of education, you will be a support to your nation. What matters is love, which is far above. It matters to be clever, um, but you will be a kind child forever. I pray you have enough laughter ever after. I know you can achieve anything you dream of if you believe. 
code. Mommy and Daddy are full of code. We trust you have all the skills to code. Alice Smith is the place for education so you can contribute to the good nation. Excellent. If you want to achieve in yourself, you must believe. Good. Sweet Sarah, that is here for hope. I know in life you need strength and support to cope. To realize your potential, seek education. To help build a nation. With lots of love from high above, try to be clever, but don't have to be forever. So long. <laughs> <laughs> so long there is laughter from then and ever after. We give you this expensive education <laughs> to be useful to our growing nation. Try not to think you're too clever. Remember, learning will be forever. <laughs> Your family will always shower you with love and hold you in a place as far above, the place where you need to pass the test will be clever. We hope you'll stay a child in your heart forever. Thank you. Um, okay, okay. Um, through your life you will have love to allow you to rise above, never think you are too clever, learning is forever. Okay. Throughout your life there will be laughter, you will live happy ever after. Some days you leave me without hope. My head and my hands, I just can't cope. <laughs> we send you to school for an education, but the rest of those backwards up a generation. <laughs> very, very well done, sir. Next minute, So, one minute left, let me see if your brain synapses have woken up. <laughs> If I said left, then you'd say right. left, right. left. Right. This side on fire, man. <laughs> this side a little bit cool. <laughs> if I said hot, then you'd say hot, hot, hot. hot. If I said young, then you'd say old. young, old. young. Old. I hope you don't feel old right now. Give yourself a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, um, thank you. A huge thank you. That was amazing. We really, really enjoyed it, and we hope you did too. And I hope you're really excited. Okay, so um, on the presentation, we've just written down a few things that uh, the Dreadwell Home has done with you that maybe hopefully you can take home and have some fun with, with your family, um, children, spouses, grandparents, everybody. So we've got the opposite poems, we've got rhyming wars. Which, um, yeah, maybe you'd like to say something about that? Uh, forgot that bit. <laughs> uh, basically, um, you get your people together words that, that rhyme the same, so they might spend a week getting create, late, late, mate, and then you have a kind of a competition uh, to see who can out rhyme the other person. And once they've acquired these words, because learning is not about acquisition of language, you can swallow dictionaries for lunch, it's about how you learn them. So the next stage, once they've got these rhyming couplets, education, communication, you get to put at the end of a sentence. I come to school for my education. Sometimes I get stuck like constipation. <laughs> <laughs> Just so on and so forth. And it's that, 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 that little bit is the most important bit. Uh, if you can learn with laughter, uh, it will live ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've also got um, the beatboxing that we, we did so brilliantly before as well, that's a lot of fun. Um, and also, just look out for the, some fantastic videos which you can um, watch with your children at home. I've been showing um, a lot of Michael Rosen this week, my year three class absolutely love it, and one of the, the children's favourite is the chocolate cake poem. So do, I would encourage you to have a look at that, it's, it's, he is an amazing performer. Um, there's a website called Giggle Poetry as well, um, and that's a lot of fun for actually speaking and performing poems with your children at home. There was one there about playing the violin, so if any of your children do have the violin lessons at, at Alice, you can maybe read that with them because the child plays a note on the violin and then the, the parent responds, so, so that's fun as well.
Okay, so just um, in terms of developing our public speakers and performers, it's not all about having amazing visitors like the Bird of Haley in. Um, there's a lot of continuous um, provision for, for public speaking in, and encouraging those skills in all our children. So obviously we do the productions. We've just had the amazing Year 4 production um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've got class assemblies which run throughout the year. Um, we've got poetry slams like this week. Talk homework is a regular feature which um, the, the teachers take care to send out every week. And the focus of that is, is discussing, is listening, is encouraging your child to articulate. Um, blogging is going on in year six. Show and tell um, is, a, is a popular feature, particularly with the younger classes. Presenting in class. Year 3 Bronze Awards, Year 4 Silver Awards, Year 5 Gold Awards and the Year 6 Challenge of course. The children are very much encouraged to do that work at home and then stand up and just present. Um, Think Pair Share is a common teacher tool which runs throughout the school. So if you're doing a teaching point or you ask the child a question, we would ask them to have a think about it first and pair up with a partner to have a discussion and then when they're ready to share that with the class. And again, that's encouraging the listening, the speaking skills. And of course, we've got um, a wide range of uh, extracurricular activity clubs involving speaking and listening drama and um, debating. So again, just a few more things that you might want to try at home to help develop your children into public speaking. First of all, don't call it public speaking. That will put them right off. Make it game, make it fun. We're going to have a discussion, we're going to talk, we're going to play a game in the car, we're going to have a rhyming war with each other. All those opportunities are helping your children without saying, OK, we're going to sit down tonight and we're going to learn to be public speakers. OK, I think you'll probably have a bit more response with just playing the games, doing the activities, and then we will see that transfer in the children when they're at school. Think of it as like riding a bike. It really is. The more you do it, you need to just get out, have a go, and the better you will become. So the more speaking opportunities your children have, the better they will become. Think about the next time you go to a restaurant. Maybe your child can place the order instead of you. They can think it through, feed it back to you, so they can start doing that. Play games in a comfortable environment. Let them know that it's okay to make a mistake or have a go. They've had a try. And, and laugh if it goes wrong. They're having a go. They're being go-getters. That's what we want them to be. Give lots of positive feedback and encouragement. Well done, that's really great. Do you want to try doing this next time? How could we do that? Is there something I could do to make it better? So that discussion, how did you create that? What a wonderful idea. I've never heard that before. It might be an answer you think that's completely, that's really interesting. I wonder where you found that word. Should we look at it? Um, use video to get your children feeling comfortable in front of the camera. I know a lot of us have mobile devices now. Maybe they could recite a poem and you could send it to a relative somewhere else. You could have Skype if you have family or friends in another country. Maybe they could play the game there. Right, Grandma, if I say hip, what are you going to say? She's like, oh, replacement, replacement. <laughs> it might not always work, but you know, you could definitely give it a go and teach Granny or Granddad something to do. Um, try a few board games. Articulate is a great game, especially for the older key stage two children, where they can start to use their vocabulary and apply. There's a game called Cranium. Again, that's great for them to play with older pairs, um, parents, family. Another game that encourages public speaking. And again, we've done a link there, just so you've got more things to look at. I know some of your friends or other people haven't been able to make it today. Again, we've got some more websites so that you can look at this. It'll be on the parent portal. You can visit those. This will all be there for you. If your children have come back inspired from the week, you can go onto these websites. They can have a go at watching poems, reading poems, acting out poems. They might want to make a mask so that they can perform their poem. That's absolutely fine. We would encourage it. Send a picture in to your teacher. Show us what's going on. We love hearing about home learning. It's a really fantastic thing to see and do. And finally, we would like to hand over to the dreadlock alien. Um, I forgot about this bit. Um, <laughs> why don't I just do a poem? I take the job of a poet very, very seriously. Uh, I don't have the answers. That's the preachers and the teachers. They know everything. 
Poets just ask questions, then run really quickly. <laughs> and poets can change language. Words are the tools that we build the fabric of society with. So words are really, really important. So this poem is about two words that have shaped my life and seven billion others. The words black and white. As a writer, I think they're lazy. You know, you might be black, but you could be Somalian, Ghanaian, Caribbean. You might be white, but you could be English, Scottish, French. There are a whole myriad of shades in between. Who's ticked those equal opportunity forms? Go on, please describe your ethnic origin. Who's ticked those? Come on, you must have done. Who would tick Malay? Who would tick uh, Asian? Who would tick other? <laughs> oh, another. Hey, lots of others from another mother. Brother. We should club together, have an other society. Because we are persecuted. We're the only one on the tick box. Please explain. <laughs> So I cut and paste this poem. There was a poet that trod before me called John Agar that dealt with the term half-caste. Who heard that term before, half-caste? Yeah, we don't use that term anymore in the U. When I was six years old, they stopped using it. They used to say, where are you from? I'm from half-caste land. <laughs> Where's that not telling you? So they changed it, they took that word away from me, my identity, and they called me mixed race. For the next 25 years, I was mixed race. Where are you from? Mixed race here. <laughs> Where's that from? Not telling you. But recently they've stopped using that, that language. We looked at the, the etymology of the word race and we figured that we're all from the same human race. So how could I be mixed race? My parents are from different planets half the time. <laughs> but they're both human from the human race. So I'm now called Jewel Heritage. So this poem is about the words black and white. And I couldn't paste it and put it in that poem. <laughs> you know, please explain. There you go. I am whatever colour you see. I'm the dark suntan look that 95% of the UK sits out during summer for. I'm the Chevy Latino who's on the dance floor. I'm the colour of the exotic other. I it from my dad, everything from my mother. I'm chocolate, dark milk and white. I'm the bronze that flashes throughout the night. I'm the colour of rain soaked rust. I'm the beige bloke that Kuala Lumpur don't trust. <laughs> that line works anywhere. I'm the old colored chestnut that's roasted in open fires. I'm the type of fake suntan that wants ego, so desires. I'm the caramel bar melted in the heat. Sugar coffee cinder, sugar can sweet. I'm tarnished copper. I'm unpolished brass. I'm the sandalwood sojourner that you just walked past. I'm the dark that's between the handsome and tall. I'm that subtle shade of a sandstone wall. I'm that single drop of cream in your Colombian coffee cup. I'm tan, I'm sable, I'm cinnamon, I'm a hint of roasted nuts. I'm the colour of freshly dug mother earth. I'm mulatto, mixed up from birth. <sighs> Cherokee mahogany, a darker shade of pale. Nubian autumn blossom, the colour of real ale. I am mocha, terracotta, mustard seed and teak. I'm the tongue of raw sienna, Tokyo I've got a golden glint running through my chain. The you melanin overload running through my brain? I'm that toasted shade of hot almond flakes. I'm the cocoa powder of granny shakes over cakes. So every colour for morning parents, please, let's get it right. If colour's what we see, then truly who is brown, black or white? That's the end of that poem and that's the end of the assembly. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Very, very well done. Um, we hope that you've got some ideas and some takeaways and again look out for our books in the library and feel free to Google our dreadful ideas. We'll see those of you who are coming this afternoon. Thank you.